Hi, I'm Ilona Vass, and I'm delighted to be on Prosper's The Online Prosperity Show. Uh, and we will be talking about harmony in the workplace. We will be talking about team leadership and um, a lot about the human being. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga. And today, we have a truly inspiring guest that is joining us. Now, Ilona, how are you doing today? I'm very well. It's a sunny day, <laughs> despite recently being very rainy. So when the sun's out, my heart opens up and I have a sunny disposition today. Fantastic. Well, I will give you a bit of a warning. You should never live in Melbourne then because then you have all of the seasons in one minute and you might not be able to maintain that disposition. But I'm really excited about having you uh, on the show today and I want to pass on this excitement to the viewer. Uh, and if you haven't heard who Ilona Vass is, well, you're in for a treat today. Now, Ilona is an expert in leadership and team communication and she she helps leaders to discover and expand their full communication potential while she's guiding teams to build an excellent everyday communication infrastructure and always keeping human originality in mind. I'm really excited because I met Ilona at her book launch when she was launching this beautiful book here. And I tell you, uh, as soon as I saw this and what she was talking about, I had to have her on the show. And basically the book is around how to actually manage a diverse and disparate teams to reduce conflict and also lifting productivity. And it's just really striking the chord and it becomes a guide in and of itself, um, you know, to lead people in a modern workplace. Now, you might be thinking, why Ilona? Why now? And who should care? Well, let me tell you something. Ilona's mission is to improve how humans speak with each other every single day and also handle challenging conversations with ease and dignity. From her fascinating background in Indian classic um, music and a dance, she also has an impressive travel record of having gone across 30 different countries and she brings a unique perspective to the table. There's different cultures, different foods, different musics and genres that she is telling us about. So she's here to share her wisdom and some incredible strategies that will uh, help us create businesses that are harmonious and lead teams that are actually successful. So I'm hoping that you're going to be inspired as I was to learn a little bit more about how you can transform your communication skills and lead with confidence. And without further ado, let's uh, hear from Ilona herself. Now, Ilona, I probably have butchered your introduction so much that you probably need to do it all over again. Tell us a little bit about your journey so far and how you actually became uh, uh, an expert in leadership and communication. Oh, thank you, Prosper. Very, very kind words. And I was just thinking, who's that person you talk about? Yes. <laughs> it's always funny to hear other people speak about yourself. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, where do you want me to start? I have already reached quite a nice age. So I have already quite a bit of a journey in my life. Um, where do you want me to start? Um, Fantastic. So so obviously in, in the time that you have, you know, started your journey or your career, how did, how did you step into, you know, this, this space? Yeah, I think the earliest thing that kind of contributes to who I am today now was my huge interest in the Chinese culture. So when I was very young, I was very fascinated by the Chinese writing, by the, um, you might say, classical China, the things you see on the paintings and um, yeah, all, all everything that was related to Chinese culture. Yep. So I was quite stubborn. I said, okay, that's what I do for university. And I did. <laughs> and um, I was very, very lucky to get a scholarship also to study in China. 
And that was my first connection yeah. with the foreign culture on a longer term basis. And I had no preparation on what does it mean, cross-cultural communication, yeah. different ways of leading a life, different understandings of how to do business and things like that. Uh, but I've embraced it fully. And I think that was my starting journey to become a full global citizen. So at heart, I'm a very global person. Uh, I think there is beauty in all cultures, in all different regions of the world, and we just have to dig deeper to see it. And one way of doing that is good communication and different forms of communication. We often think that being eloquent is communication, but I think there is a lot more to it. It's not about just putting beautiful words together and feeling like, oh, I'm eloquent. There is a lot more about compassion, understanding how different personalities tick, what different preferences people have in conversations. So this was my starting journey in China. Then I had the privilege to step into my first career, which was with aviation. I worked for Austrian Airlines pretty much all over the world. So I was again living my global citizen life. And again, expanded really my ability to communicate across cultures, uh, communicate for harmony. And I often was inspired by Asian concepts of harmony coming from all different uh, cultures. And I think harmony got a bit of a bad reputation in, in what you might call the Western cultures. It was like, yeah, if you if you are harmonic, you can't um, kind of have success. Yeah, if you're always striving for harmony in the workplace, where's the, the healthy competition going on? Yeah. So I think there was a misconception around that. And yeah. that much later on carried me into the book I have been writing because there is more to harmony than that kind of understanding. Yeah, so I worked uh, for aviation industry for about 15 years. So it was a beautiful career. I loved it with every fiber. I was never in the air. Yeah? I was always on the ground. I was always in sales and country management and what you might call general management. And my last posting was Australia. And in Australia, kind of life had um, arranged for me to meet to meet the father of my son. He's Australian, but he's uh, not in my world any longer for quite some time. And that kind of grounded me in this country. Also, I'm not uh, sure if you're aware of, but when you have a child who is born in, in Australia, it is you can't just say, okay, the relationship didn't work out and I'm going home back to Austria. Um, you, you are kind of grounded here. So I've, I had to find a new career. My airline career ended here because we closed down offices from Austrian Airlines and there were some big corporate changes happening. And then I was reflecting, what was it actually what I loved about my management career? And that was bringing the best out in people and cherish their individuality. Um, I tried to communicate in a way with my many different staff so that they felt they were heard, they were um, encouraged, they were supported. And that took me quite a bit of different languages. It took me different ways of engaging my staff. And I wanted to delve deeper here. And that's what I did. So I've done quite a very specialized qualifications around communication behavior in particular, the psychology around communication. And I started to see this, this is something which weaves through the life of every single person on this planet. Yeah, we wouldn't be humans without communication, but we often underestimate how important it is to get a little bit more knowledge around how that communication actually functions and works. And if we, if we as humans would have that knowledge, there wouldn't be any war on this world. Yeah? So I'm convinced about that. 
So this this kind of became my thing, yeah, you might say, in, in helping people to understand more about communication, be able to decode certain behaviors in communication when someone, you might say, loses the plot. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, <clears throat> that's where the potential for conflict lies. But if you understand that on a deeper level, you can set really good interventions. And this is especially important for leadership or people who um, manage teams or manage people in general. Yeah, so that, that became my new career. I, I am self-employed. Um, so I work, I work across as kind of having my own programs. I work as a coach. Um, I also uh, sometimes are seconded yeah, to certain projects, and I'm also teaching at the university. Absolutely. So that's where I am at the moment. Yeah, very, very happy and very passionate about bringing better understanding for communication into the workplace. Absolutely. And thank you so much for going in depth and really sharing, um, you know, your journey with us there, because it now puts into perspective exactly why the passion for you to communicate and also to foster this communication amongst teams um, is important for you. Because so many people, as you would have noticed, have probably never left the state that they live in or have never left the country that they live in for them to have an understanding that there's different cultures, different people and different ways of being out there. Now, you've learned all these languages and um, things uh, like that. What, what are some of the challenges that you come across when you're trying to speak to someone in a language that's not your mother tongue? Ah, oh, yeah. So the, the whole mother tongue thing <laughs> is, again, something which I think we could handle a lot better. Um, there is this kind of, I wouldn't say it's a bias, but it's an unconscious, uncomfortableness people have when someone speaks their language, but with either an accent or with mistakes or speaking slower or not being able to find the right word. We, we have not developed enough compassion, understanding, and I would say even tolerance for that to not always get either hectic about it or stressed about it or wanting to move things forward Yeah, well, because I don't have the time to explain this again to you. I think I think the, we we take out so much opportunities in not having that understanding and that tolerance level. So yes, I've I've seen it myself. I sometimes deliver trainings in foreign languages. I mean, even here in Australia, it's not my mother tongue. And I encourage everyone, honestly, everyone who kind of is in a situation like this, never, ever let that get to you. My English, German, whatever it is, is not good enough. I'm not good enough. Yeah? So never, ever let that get to you. Try to improve the language skills, absolutely, but never let that stress from another person get to you in, in diminishing your your essence, your abilities, your expertise. Absolutely. And as you would notice, I mean, obviously traveling around, you're getting into different cultures, different ways of being, uh, especially the Asian, you know, they have a lot of respect towards, you know, their, either their elders and people that are supposedly in high esteem and they've got ways that they bow in and, and all that stuff. Whereas when you mentioned, you know, in the, in, in maybe the West, we, we, we might not have all of that. It's all individualistic. It's, I am, it's, you know, I'm the person that's, you know, is more important. And there's that sort of entitlement. How do you sort of balance all of hmm. that as a leader, you know, when you're now crossing across all these different, you know, um, um, cultures, if, 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 if you're not aware of this. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's as a leader, we, we can go to extremes in either way. And I think finding the right balance is the best way. So I I recommend everyone who comes from what we call an individualistic culture 
to understand that there is another way of thinking and that is what we call the collectivistic thinking and just accept and respect that. On the other hand, if you come from a collectivistic culture, I also encourage you to not be a slave to your own culture. Yeah? Um, don't always accept everything as it is. Yeah, Also find your own way in that sense how Am I helpful and useful for my society or for my company yeah, where I'm working in? And that's not always in always being quiet, silent and smiling. Yeah, that also doesn't get us to success yeah, or moving a company forward. So I would say messages for both sides would be good. And as a leader, I would encourage you to also give that message to everyone. So not putting and one is the better way or we often love to talk about best practice. Yeah? What's best practice? Well, best practice is for everyone different. But also kind of keep the mind open that you might be a bit biased by your own culture and think that is the right way to do. It might work for your environment, but I think there is a lovely, beautiful middle ground where you find that good harmony and that successful harmony, yeah? that, that harmony that goes for productivity, that goes for empowerment of everyone in on this world. Absolutely. And I like how you described yourself as a global citizen. I mean, obviously, you've traveled 30 different countries and you've worked in six different um, in and worked in six of those uh, countries, you know, really immersed with the culture, nuance and everything else that's coming along with this. Now, how has this, like you say, you know, you have to take everything, but also make your own sort of middle ground or whatever it is. But how mm -hmm. has this global experience influence your approach to communication and leadership now? Um, I think it really widened my horizon. And as I said, I have a sunny disposition. Yeah? So widening a horizon for me doesn't mean, oh, my God, there is so much I don't know. Yeah? There is so much I don't understand. So I'm panicking and now I'm withdrawing. <laughs> I think my sunny disposition allowed me to really embrace and see the beauty in so many different things. And just being less judgmental. I think it really helped me to be less judgmental in general. Obviously, that comes with age as well, Prosper, as you might know. Yeah? <laughs> but um, I think there is a lot more to do for us uh, in being less judgmental about how we do things it is understandable yeah? so it's not like well open up and that's it fine it's it's a journey and nowadays yeah with all you mentioned it before prosper with all the digital revolutions yeah, and we can sit here in the room and have an intimate conversation although we are thousands of kilometers apart um it's it is the new way the world works we are global and I think it is a chance for us as humanity to embrace that yeah, and make this a better world in that sense. So this has definitely shaped me in, in being more open-minded, being more tolerant and, and enjoying the beauty in the world, enjoying more of the beauty in the world. Absolutely. And um, uh, there's, there's a point that you mentioned, obviously, that so many people just subscribe to best practice you know, um, which is what it's always been like this. This is how we do things. And this is how our competitors are doing um, things. So we might as well just follow it. And usually you are ending up with a square plug and trying to ram it into a round hole, yes. which obviously creates that tension, um, you know, amongst people. But in your work, you actually focus on human originality right so that people go in and do things as how they would do it we are mm -hmm. unique in um our own way now can you explain what this actually means and why it's important in in communication mm -hmm. i mean human originality means that we are all humans uh, and there is a common ground and one of these common grounds is communication and the tools i'm working with 
they have proved that um, all over the world, regardless which culture, there is a human core in communication. Yeah, There are different ways of how we express each other. And it doesn't matter if you are from Beijing or if you are from, um, I don't know, Cape Town, yeah, or if you are from um, Kansas, yeah, Kansas City, anywhere in the world, we we have we tick in communication that way every human does, and I think that is what really allows us to see the human originality and the human core, and that is kind of the culture comes as an overlay, but we do have that. And I think this gives us big hope yeah, that we can get along with each other. I can communicate with anyone in the world if I understand how that works. Mm, absolutely. See, when I, yes, when I was growing up, Ilona, they, they told yeah. me no two fingers on the same hand are of the same height. And that's the reason why your hand is able to grasp certain things because each finger is making that possible so from what you're saying each individual comes in they have a duty they have a role to play and if we would actually let them you know explore and find out what they're capable of we could actually have harmonious teams and um maybe businesses that are profitable and enjoyable right absolutely absolutely i love your analogy with the hand <laughs> i love it. <laughs> I know that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of harmonious teams, thank you for the book. I You're think very- it is a symphony that needed to be played, and you eloquently put it together. And I think this is a masterpiece. Now, it is a book that I've read, and it emphasizes the importance of harmony in teams, um, and the way that it actually. Um, you know, helps people in the modern workplace. So what are some of the key takeaways from the book that you want the audience to actually implement in their own teams? Yeah, I mean, the key takeaway, I would say is, I mean, you might say, oh, God, not another leadership book. Yeah, (laughs) there are thousands and they all have their, they all have their place. All these books have their place. And I think also my book has a place, although it's one of so many leadership books. I think it brings that kind of originality also from my upbringing. Yeah? So I come from Austria, as I mentioned before, which is one of the countries with music yeah? and music, especially classic music is kind of in our blood and we grow up with it and everyone plays an instrument and we all go to concerts and it's just normal part of life. And um, I was, when when I started to look for harmony in teams, which was a topic that was important to me, I wasn't first thinking of the musical analogy, but when you do your research and I was just Googling harmony and team harmony and things like that, and I felt like, gosh, there is so much more on harmony from the music world yeah, than actually in, in the workplace. And that kind of gave me the idea. And then I was reflecting back on my life. And I think this is a key takeaway for leadership. Don't try to fit only one mold. Yeah? Don't, as I said, their best practice. You have to find as a leader your best practice and when you when you take a concept like musical harmony, it gives you it allows you more. Um, I'm often I'm really a believer that we should be more allowing people, as you so beautifully said before, to be who they are and contribute in their way to the world. And I think the same counts for leadership harmony or leaders who want to create harmony. And that would be a key takeaway from my book. Um, I have a model which works with these musical theories of consonance, dissonance, and a resonance. Uh, and um, that is kind of the unique approach, I think, to that concept of harmony in the workplace. 
Fantastic. I quite like it. I mean, you know, just the the start of the book takes you into a whole different world. <laughs> and you think to yourself, wait a minute, am I in a business book or am I in a, um, a, a showpiece here? And it's the theater, the art and everything else. But there's a story that really caught me, which I think a lot of leaders are very guilty of. You speak of um, the emperor. I think his name is uh, Joseph, uh, Emperor Joseph. Yeah, Friend, that's that's what I can Friend. remember for now, but I, I will uh, get checked there. And Emperor Joseph now has a problem where he can no longer um, say anything negative because when he did, somebody committed suicide. Now, mm -hmm. we find that a lot of leaders in the modern workplace are Emperor Joseph because they don't want that people go maybe take them to fair work or maybe commit suicide or have issues with them coming mm -hmm. to work. So they just now sugarcoat everything without actually giving people proper feedback. Did I understand that story correctly? Yes, you, you picked um, actually a part of the story which um, I wasn't actually relating to, to leadership, but you're absolutely right. Yeah? Um, I would say I do see a shift in leadership. So there is kind of with, with the next generations becoming leaders, there is more of the wish or desire for a more harmonious workplace and more allowing people and encouraging um, kind of the best in people. But we still have these lapses back into a very old, very rigid leadership style. And we still are guilty of um, thinking that that gives you success. Yeah? So I often, I'm often really taken aback uh, when we speak about highly successful people and we put them up on the pedestal uh, and we think they are so fantastic and great and my god they make millions of dollars and whatever but they actually have a very awful way of communicating an awful way of behaving to their own staff but then it's all dropped. Yeah? It's all accepted and acceptable because they are so successful. And then I ask everyone, think a bit more of what is success. Yeah? And a friend of mine um, mentioned it really beautifully. Leadership or being a CEO in the modern workplace should be beyond profit. Uh, it should be beyond that, oh, because you have profit, it excuses everything. Um, it should go beyond. It should go for humanity. It should go for proper treatment of people and good ways of communicating with each other. Absolutely. And and I think when, when people are communicating, they would have a good sense of even belonging to the organization and when people feel like they are being listened to. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's proven over and over again. I mean, we we have, thank God, yeah, we have these beautiful statistics of the best workplaces in Australia and every country, every country, I hope every country comes out with that the statistic. These are the companies who are successful and take that calling for good communication, proper treatment of staff, very serious. Seriously. And and they are the most popular ones. Yeah. They are the ones where everyone wants to work for. <laughs> Absolutely. Now there's also a statement that you mentioned, and, and I think so many people have that going on in, in their workplaces. I think you said we don't do conflict here. And um you know, with that, I, I just married, you know, another concept that I saw from you, which is you have shifted from what you term as forced positivity to relaxed positivity. Now, can you maybe elaborate on this shift and how it's actually impacted, um, you know, your professional and personal life? Yes, yes. So I think there was very rightfully so, a movement from this very pessimistic, um, this is the way how things work, a very rigid way to to that um, change of 
if I tell my mind all the time, everything's fine, then it will be fine. I think that was a pendulum going into the other extreme. And that is actually equally stressful for people. So when you never can show that something gets under your skin or you can never um, word out yeah, when there is something not right or you think, my goodness, we've made a mistake here with that customer. Uh, there was something going really wrong when you're not even allowed to say that mm-hmm. and always brush over everything with everything's fine. Yeah, we're so happy here. We don't do this and everything's good. Um, mm-hmm. That is equally stressful for people yeah, when they have to keep up that pretense. So I'm I'm a huge believer of acknowledging when we have feelings that are not always positive, yeah, and we can't just mind them away. <laughs> um, that that is a different. There are different techniques, yeah, of stepping out of that kind of negative thinking, which isn't helpful either. But I think we have to find that balance, and that just needs knowledge on how you do that. That needs to know how do I take myself into a better place when I have bad experiences at the workplace or when I feel compassion for a client that has been mistreated by my own company and that we then allow these feelings and discuss it through in a way that is productive and actually gets us then back into a positive place and not criticizing people or you're always so negative yeah and uh, oh my God! Why? Why do you mention that? Yeah, it's it's only one case. Yeah, but a hundred is everything's positive. So this is what I mean with false positivity because it's equally stressful. Yeah, when we have to keep up the pretense. Yeah. <laughs> mm, absolutely, and obviously, you know, with 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 a lot of businesses, it's always about the bottom line and whatever keeps the profits, like you said. But you need to be aiming beyond. Uh, profits for you to actually have and um, introduce that harmony. Now, I don't know. I don't know what you think about this, Ilona. The last couple of years have sort of presented a different workplace. You know, so many people have been um, introduced to a concept of you being able to work from home, and businesses have also been introduced to a concept that you literally can hire anyone from anywhere in the world and now this is just bringing in a whole cocktail of um things that we've never really experienced um you know in the past so these mm-hmm. reports that there's a lot of stuff turnover and it's becoming a big big common issue because now people can work for international companies without having to leave their home and vice versa international companies can now find the best talent without looking for people that are just local to to them how do you then motivate people to form an a team quickly yeah very good question um let's say you have a remote team and you are physically not able yeah, to meet initially i i still recommend that sometimes if it's a longer project yes if it's a few months project you won't be able to do that but if you hire someone in a leadership position let's say from um, an Austrian company, but the person sits in in Mongolia, then kind of, I still encourage that at least you bring your worldwide staff at one point together. This is just one thing which I think some companies do. But on a general basis, yeah, so you hire someone, the next kind of big global meeting is in two years. Yeah, you have to get that team working fast. I would say lots in the beginning, you need to have, you need to spend really a long time to work out amongst each other via Zoom yeah, or Teams or whatever is out there on how do we communicate best with each other. And as a leader, this is challenging because you really have to encourage your openness. Yeah? You have to create that climate of openness so people honestly share what works best for them. And you kind of make what I call a team charter. Yeah? You're creating kind of an agreement with each other where everyone chips in. 
And everyone has to say something. Yeah? No one can sit back and lean back and say, oh, I'm a quiet person or I'm a shy person, so I don't say anything. Yeah. No, everyone has to chip in. And you, that takes a bit of time in the beginning. But when that clarity is there and that kind of mutual agreement, then it's a lot easier to quickly address when something's getting a bit off. Yeah? So when things don't work or get a bit clunky, then we are a lot easier and more comfortable to address this early on because we have that mutual clarity and that helps with the productivity and moving on with the project regardless from where you work. If you don't do that and just have one session and say, yes, hello, and this is so-and-so, and we are all happy together, and um, how do you like to communicate? And everyone says, oh, yeah, I want to be precise and clear, and uh, we want to work on time, I want to work towards deadlines. You have to be a lot more specific. What does that mean to you, clear? What does that mean to you, precise? And you need to take that time in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think that's a recipe. That's a good recipe for, for productivity and a team. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. I mean, because at the end of the day, um, I, I think there's that statement. If you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. But you have to actually understand the individuals that are coming together at that one particular uh, position because some people are introverted and some people are very loud and so many people don't get to speak or don't even get noticed in a meeting or things like that and um while I was reading your book I was I was really drawn to this exercise that you put in there you will understand from now yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love it, it Ross, but love it. You got the prop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get a bigger balloon in time, but <laughs> that whole balloon um scenario where you got um, you know, you you spoke about a team leader that wrote the people's uh, names on a balloon, and then for the first time, people couldn't find their name, but after a while. <laughs> People now could find, you know, their, you know, a person's name and then pass it on. I mean, yeah. maybe I butchered this whole story, but maybe you can tell us of this <laughs> exercise. No, you didn't butcher it, Prosper. You, you, you beautifully made it very concise. Yeah, it's 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 kind of highlighting, uh, especially in very individualistic um, societies and companies who. Um, kind of think if 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 I'm good, yeah, if I move forward and often the elbow techniques and the huge competition with each other. It's when you have teams like that, it's very good to highlight to them that you need each other. Yeah? Without each other, you can't go further, as you said. And this balloon exercise is a very good way to to bring the message home. Yeah? And yes, you you send people. It it works with bigger teams. Yeah, with smaller teams, I think we can do the other exercises. But with a big team, um, write the names on their balloons and let everyone go and find their balloon. Yeah, and they just won't find it, or perhaps someone is lucky. But then, if you say find each other's balloon yeah, and hand it over to your team member, that really highlights that we have we are working together. And I'm hugely not a fan of competition within teams and i'm and definitely also not within the company yeah we see that unfortunately still where we have very many silos uh, that one silo fights for more budget than the other silo and yeah so it's, i'm not a fan of that i don't think this is this might be a short term success yeah, for one part of the business but not for the entirety and yeah, that exercise highlights that we need each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that that is something, you know, that needs to happen. But obviously it has to happen, you know, and when when people are seeing each other. But you do offer to our uh, communication potential exploration, right, where people can get to understand, you know, their communication potential what can people expect from this session and how does it actually benefit them 
uh, it gives you a good insight in in I mean I always say we have the potential to communicate with everyone. That means we have every single personality within our communication abilities, but we often have not developed some quite well. And when you start to, on a logical way, understand how this different way of communicating and thinking and doing work operates, that gives you a really good insight in in your own leadership style. Yeah? That really helps you to understand why perhaps you have a problem with that particular colleague. And then you can make the correct adjustments. You can shift your communication. You can adapt to that. You can build up your own kind of energy in that sense that you can hold conversations which would be naturally more difficult for you longer and easier and it's it's kind of building new muscles yeah flexing new muscles in communication and that kind of snapshot of your your leadership potential in communication helps with that tremendously mm, i quite like that and what would be the best way that uh, people can get started in exploring this uh, communication potential um well, contact me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm very approachable. Uh, so I I I live also. I I'm a huge fan of personalization. So kind of no one who approaches me is treated by an AI entity. Yeah, or by someone somewhere. It, they are treated by me, and they I have conversations with people to find out what it really is they need with communication and then we we work from there so send me an email give me a phone call you find everything on my website absolutely now ilana i can't thank you enough for the time that we've spent on the call today but also for bringing out such a remarkable book i mean so many people have this issue when it comes to being a leader you know when it's their turn to lead um they would have probably been uh an everyday or ordinary employee but they're now suddenly given a position to lead and they don't know where to start and i feel like this is the book that every emerging sort of leader and already existing leader needs to get their hands on that way they know exactly what to do because I don't know if you've heard this. So many people complain that there's no support once you're at the top. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Prosper. Thank you for <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Um, absolutely. It's 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 a challenge, yeah. And it's it's a choice if you want to be in a leadership role. And people often think, now I know um what to do. I'm just kind to everyone, yeah, and um I'm compassionate, but I also have to drive business forward. How do I do that? Yeah. So they very quickly often start to understand that um it's more knowledge around human beings than actual business knowledge yeah, they need. And they often don't get it provided yeah from their uh, companies. Yeah. Mm, I also kind of feel like this is somewhat of a rite of passage, you know, when somebody has just been initiated into leadership and then you're sort of tapping them on your on their shoulder and saying, hey, it's your turn to lead now. So <laughs> I encourage people to really grab this book, uh, especially if you're just so newly but... founded leader there and things of that nature. Well, now, Ilona, this has been amazing. I mean, obviously you know, having seen your launch and now having the book, um, you know, in my shelf, it has found a good space in there. And I'm definitely going to be sending this to any other leader that I come across, especially people that are my clients. Um, now that you've put what I think is a masterpiece out, what's what's left? What's next? What is what's next? next? <laughs> <laughs> People ask me, what's your next book? Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, so th this was kind of um, leadership for teams. I am considering another leadership book. And I think uh, another quality which is often underestimated is dignity in leadership. So as you said, it comes with a responsibility 
Um, it comes with understanding humans more and there is a certain way where you can leave the dignity with everyone, uh, even if you have a difficult employee and how you do that. So that is an idea. And then I have another really, really strange idea, but I'm, I'm personally loving uh, mysteries and crime stories. Wow. So the fictional ones, not, not necessarily the real crimes. That's not so much my thing. And I was thinking perhaps I write a crime story um, reverting back to all my travel experiences I have and put that into um, kind of a corporate environment. So perhaps a middle management who solves uh, crimes which happen on a corporate um, global meeting or whatever it is. So, <laughs> so this, this is spooking a bit in my mind, but. We'll see. I might. I might have to park that for a while, but that would be something. That would be a fun thing for me to do. Oh, fantastic! Now, based based on who you've been and where you've uh, come from, have you ever seen in the movies there, Ilona, where they're sitting at a boardroom and they've run out of ideas? They don't know what to do next, and then one of the um you know one of the interns just slides a paper to the boss, and then the paper has. Uh, a name on it and then they the boss just stands up and says send the chopper i think you're the send the chopper lady where you're probably going to be somewhere enjoying the sun and then a team <laughs> needs harmony and then they send down a chopper to bring you in so that you can set them on the straight and narrow this is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I can't... And who is sending you a chopper, Prosper? <laughs> I hope there are people who do that too. <laughs> well, hopefully after I've read this, I will be the one driving the chopper because then I would know exactly what we need to do. And I'll pass by the gift shop and buy a whole bunch of balloons so that we can um, showcase to the people as soon as we show up in the room. Yeah. But um, I really, really thank you so much for the time that you have spent uh, with me on the show and also writing the book. And if you are going to not unsee anything again, if you look at the image on there, that's like the chopper from the top actually going... Ah. <laughs> I love that, Ross. But thank you so much. Thank you. It 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 really was my absolute pleasure yeah, to be on your podcast and wishing you all the success. Yeah? And um, yeah, I'm sure we will be in touch. Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I mean, your insights into leadership and communication have been truly enlightening, and I encourage everybody to grab themselves a copy of uh team harmony well you won't be getting my one because my one is assigned a copy but you can get this off of amazon and also be able to start um you know striking the right chords because this is a guide to leading people into the modern workplace and if you find this episode valuable don't forget to re-watch it and share it with your network and especially the leaders that you work with in your business. Was there something that you wanted to say before we conclude there, Ilona? Yes. If anyone wants a, wants a signed copy as well, you can also buy it from my website. So that's where you get the hand, hand signed copy from me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was only reserving that for me. Now it's no longer <laughs> special then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and thank you so much for that generous offer yes definitely get yourself um your you get your hands on this as we have um, established it is exactly what you need uh, on your next journey to leadership and while you're at it why don't you subscribe to the online prosperity show for more inspiring content and expert advice like this until next time keep thriving and obviously be committed to the growth of your teams out there. Bye for now.